In today's show, I'm gonna show you how to cut and sew a block from the Go High Tea Throw Quilt. Welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Thanks for joining us today. Emily is in the house. How are you, my friend? I'm good. Well, now I'm craving some Earl Grey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing all these teapots Just around. seeing all the teapots. <laughs> okay, I was trying to think, when was it the last time you and I did a Wednesday show? Oh my God, it's at least three or four weeks, right? Well, it's gotta be longer than that because we did the sew along. That's true. Right, and That's last true. week, so huge shout out to all the people I saw at Missouri Star Quilt Academy and all the people we saw at the Long Beach Quilt Show. We had a great time. You were having, you were just having a ball, weren't you? Just having all sorts of things. This week, if you're in the uh, Seattle area, I'm doing a live event at Issaquah Sewing on Saturday. Check it out. That's right. All right, my friend, you ready to go? I sure am. I'm excited. All right, let's see where everyone is watching from today. Um, Alicia's watching from Central Illinois. Dee said, good morning, Pam, and it has been forever. I believe that's true. <laughs> I believe that's true. Oh, and June is from Paris, Kentucky. Thanks for watching today. All right, quilters, let's showcase the new projects from our intro video. Okay, Emily, did you see this? Gorgeous. Is that not beautiful? So do you know what dye that is? Okay, I, is it the drunkard's pen? It is. Yes. <laughs> I never get these right. It is, and I love the whole red, white, and blue flag theme. It's gorgeous. Just yeah. such a new modern take on it. And I think there's a couple of different colors of red in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Kind of an ombre effect. All right, next we have Sue F. Okay, this is a darling pattern that is not an AccuQuilt pattern, but Super Smart Sue uh, just converted it because it has squares and square yep. on point yep. through the corners and rectangles and squares in the middle. Cube, cubes all the way. Oh, so cute. Oh my I really God. like that. Yeah, the colorway is gorgeous. The colorway is perfect for summer. Mm -hmm. All right, we're talking about the teapot dye today. So here is the photo of the day. So uh, a few years ago, I was in London, and that's how I was getting ready for high tea oh. in London. So for those of you who haven't been to London to have high tea, uh, it comes in, in uh, courses. So they bring you, uh, at the beginning, you have like little cheese and crackers, and then you have little sandwiches. And then you have like brownies and tarts and tw it just, you just eat for a long, long time. <laughs> now I'm not a tea drinker and they said, that's okay. They brought me hot chocolate. Oh, even better. I know, it was so serious? fun. <laughs> Love so that. So the question of the day is, have you ever been to high tea? I didn't ask, have you been, Greg, have you been? And Emily not? I haven't, but I've heard that like the way that the little tiers are set up on all yeah. of, you know, the, the container, whatever yes. you, you call those, for, that they have like a very special order yes, and a special way that they're laid out. And yeah, yeah I'd love to do it yeah. sometime. I'm loving it. <laughs> okay, so today we're gonna give away one of our Go Tea Party, well, it's called the Tea Party Die. Be sure and register for future events on the AccuQuilt event page for your chance to win. By registering, you will receive event emails. That way you're never gonna miss an exciting tutorial. And the amazing Emily will announce the winner of our registered viewer at the end of our show. Yes. Super excited. Okay, so behind me is the Go High Tea Throw Quilt. It is a free pattern at AccuQuilt.com and I love everything about this. Agreed. I love the blue, that dark navy. I love kind of those coral red colors. Right. Um, the white background is so pretty. And are so you, you're gonna need the Go Tea Party Die, the eight and a half inch, eight inch finish square, a mix and match four inch cube, a two and a half inch strip die. You're gonna need pink fat quarters and some blue and then a one and a quarter yards of gray or for the um, background, they use gray, whereas we're gonna use white. Love that, yeah, yeah. Now, before we talk about this dye, 
let me show, tell you something. This is the July dye to try and we have such limited quantities. Mm -hmm. Yesterday on our Tuesday show, we launched the Go Tree Skirt Wedge dye. Mm -hmm. It sold out by the end of business day yesterday. I literally got mine immediately. I was so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited. So if you're in your quilting head kind of thinking, oh, I'm gonna tell you the teapot dye is going, or the tea party dye is gonna sell out. Mm -hmm. um, so today is a great day to pick one up, okay? All right, so let's look at the dye because it is super cute and I've already been cutting things with it. Uh, all of the shapes are on a six by 12 die board, so it's gonna fit through all of our cutters, including that go me. Okay, look at my Band-Aid. I cut my finger with a rotary cutter this morning. Oh no. I know, That's... there's a die for all this stuff. Um, so it's gonna fit through all of our cutters. It has four distinct shapes. So it has the teapot, the lid, the tea bag, and we call this the tea tag. But right here, here I'll show you this block. Look, Emily, it cuts out the handle. That's so nice. So, I know, isn't that super cute? It's charming. Okay. Now, this, okay, we would never cut this by hand. No. I mean, even like with a template or anything. Yeah. But Summer Santa, he brought it to us, so we're super excited. Now, since it's an embroidery, or it's an applique die, it comes with free embroidery download as well as some four purchase options, which are available on the AccuQuilt website. Yeah, and they are absolutely darling, charming. darling, just darling. So don't forget, this is the July die to try. We know it's only the 12th. There were almost sold out and once they're gone, they're gone, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so let's lay out our fabric and talk about how we're gonna cut our 16 um, teapots. Oh, here. I was going to give you some samples of, so here's the block, but look what a cute little bag. We talked about how you could fill it like if someone was having a cold or the flu, yeah. you could put like chicken noodle soup or, you know, some Tylenol yeah, <laughs> and right. tissues and, and take like a little care yeah, package little tea and set. tea and tea. Of course you need so tea. Nice. Okay. All right. Now I have to tell you a funny. So um, I took my, who is now nine, as of yesterday, granddaughter Oakley, to the fabric store with me. And I said, hey, Oaks. And I had the teapot um, already, you know, I had the sample from the quilt. And I said, hey, we need to pick some fabric for our teapots for my show. And she was really excited because she doesn't often get to help me pick fabric. So. This, quilters, just, just hold your horses here, because I'm gonna iron it. This is the fabric that Oakley chose. Oakley, well done. Do you not think so? Oh my god. She said, Lola, this looks like a Mad Hatter tea party. It does. It does it? indeed. So I already have a couple of teapots Oh, and then she chose the accent color. So here's just a couple of my little Mad Hatter teapot pots oh, how cute. with the blue. Yeah, that blue is teapot perfect. lid. I know. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Okay, hold on here. We have some more colors. Oh, wow. go Oak. I mean, I just thought it was great. Look at this. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. So pretty. I think I might. So have quilters, to... think outside the box a little bit. Oh. Think outside the box and think, oh yeah, maybe I wanna do that. And you're gonna notice um, when we go through the um, show today, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not gonna, if you were going to embroider your teapots to your square, sure. you would do that before you applique them and then it would, all the embroidery machine would do all the work. Right. But I'm gonna do raw edge quilting Cute. around these little teapots before I quilt it. That's gonna be so precious. I know, and then it's uh, for sure going to Oakley's house because holy smokes. Right? All right, so before we lay out our fabric, we need to pre-fuse our fabric. So what I did was I measured from here to here on our teapot and I rough cut with the fabric eight inches. I added just a quarter of an inch on either side, okay? Perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here. And I did the same with my fusible. We have all sorts of different kinds of fusible on our website. 
okay? So whatever makes you happy. And then what you're gonna do is, nice Kenyan, got my iron super hot here. Nice. Okay? So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna iron the fusible to the back of your fabric. And isn't there like a way to tell between like the, is it the smooth side versus Right, the, the paper side. That's right. The paper side um, goes up because the bumpy side is where that um, sticky stuff is. And you'll know right away if you do it wrong because it will attach to your iron like nobody's business. Right. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this with a hot iron. Ugh, okay. I'm so impressed with these fabric choices. Pam. I know, aren't they super fun? It's like you got multiple fabrics in one. I thought piece. so too. Really? And then I already cut my strip for my um, tops. Okay. and did the same thing, okay? So now I'm gonna move this out of the way while we cut some. Hey, don't forget to tell us if you've had high tea. Yes. Now, depending on which way you want your teapots to pour, your fabric can either face up or face down, or you can fan fold it back and forth for different directions. Right. On the pattern behind us, all of ours face the same direction so in this case, all the fabric is going to face up. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna cut one at a time. Because if I fan fold back and forth, There's, half of them will be backwards. They're gonna be back, yep, yep. Do you not love this fabric? It's just, I'm, too, I'm okay. literally obsessed with it. We're gonna have to get, get together we'll have to get you some. after, yeah. We'll have to get you some. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is, in this case, because I, now I could always use four layers of prefused fabric. Right. Okay. I'm gonna tell you that in this case, just so I can keep track of what's left over, because I don't wanna cut it off. Right. You know, I didn't wanna just go there. I'm gonna cut my teapot separate from my lids. Oh, good idea. Yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna fan fold this up. Okay. All right, so don't put it on the top, don't put it underneath. Right. Just fan fold it next to the shape and next to the die. I'm gonna put my mat on it. All right, Emily, while I'm cutting my teapot, yes. will you tell us if people have been to high tea? Let's see here. We have, oh yes, lots of folks doing high tea. Um, so, um, Oh, Alyssa, actually, our own Alyssa went to high tea when she was in London. See, there we go, Alyssa. That is so sweet. Um, the Gibney, she's going to London this year, and she should for sure go to high tea. Yeah. Okay, so now look, I'm just moving it down over the next one. Right. And we keep these little pieces of prefused fabric, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing, okay? I'm just going to cut one more. Perfect. All right, all right, Emily. So besides Alyssa, who else has been to high tea? Uh, Sherry S has had high tea in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Oh, where? Yes, I would see that. Sure. Very cool. And then D says yes. We do it every year at my community center. How fun is that? I hope everybody dresses up. I dressed up. I wore like fancy clothes to go to high tea. You wear a hat. Um, I didn't because I didn't bring a hat in my suitcase all the way from the United States. Oh, that's true. That's very that's true. For that's, sure you should. It's hard to, hard to transport yeah. there. Yeah. I always like, that's what I picture when I, when I think of high tea is, you know, the ladies in like their Easter dresses and like yes. bonnets. And, and their hats. And their hats. Now, the teapot is a directional shape, but our lid and our teapot and our tea bag and our tea tag are not. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to come back and forth here a couple of times. And fold away. Yep. And I'm going to give it a good little crease right there. Right. Okay. Now, I could use a smaller mat. Let's use one. Yeah, might as well. Right here. Okay. You know, it's only going to cut where there's fabric and a mat. Mm -hmm. Quilters ask me, what does it mean when we fan fold? That's that go back and forth, back and forth. That's fan folding. All right. Yes. All right, Miss Emily, anybody else been to high tea? Well, it looks like we also have some questions coming in, too. Oh, well, let's answer questions. <laughs> okay. Jewel asks, 
When you sew pieces cut on an AccuQuilt die, do you do a full or scant quarter inch seam? Oh, what's the answer to that, Emily? A true quarter inch A true seam. quarter inch seam. Yep. Yep. Yep, they're calibrated with a, a true quarter inch seam. Mm -hmm. What else? And then, oh, um, it looks like we have a little, want to give a little bit of clarification because folks are thinking that um, the tree skirt is, you know, at the status to where folks have to vote to bring it back. It's actually a part of our permanent collection. It's just um, currently out of stock right now since it did sell out, out so quickly. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. So just hang in there. We'll get some back in yep. stock. But it did sell out before the end of the day yesterday. Yeah. And... Check your retailers, your local AccuQuilt retailer might have one. That's very true. Good job, Brock, thank you. And then people are just pouring in with what's the name of the fabric you that you have. Oh gosh, yes. right? Okay, it's here, it has to have so a label, cute. right? It has to have a label on it. Here, let's look. Right, it must, it must. This is why we love love those. Um... Gosh, I got nothing. I'll post it, I'll find it and post yeah, it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, because isn't that so fabulous? It really is. Yeah, everybody yeah. wants it. It's just kind of an ombre fabric. I feel like it was, you know, in the ombre section. Yeah, so, uh, Sonia says that Alice in Wonderland fabric is a must-have for this See? project. See, Mad Hatter. All of you are going to make Mad Hatters. Yeah. All right, now for the back of our teapot, we needed eight and a half inch squares. So I have already cut those with our eight and a half inch, eight inch finished square. And I did the exact same thing. I cut, it cuts eight and a half inches. I cut a nine inch with the fabric strip, back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you can get five um, eight and a half inch squares out of a strip of fabric. Nice. All right, so now here's kind of a cool little trick. I want my teapots, <laughs> you could have your teapots pouring, you could have them facing different ways. But I want my teapots to sit like in the same center in the middle because, you know, there's a seam allowance here. Right. And the same from the bottom. And I found that it was easier to measure from the bottom. Okay. So what we're going to do is we can iron down our teapots. Oh so here's our pretty eight and a half inch square. Okay. Just making sure, yes we are. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my clear ruler and I'm gonna come to one and a half inches, okay, from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna peel off the back, right? Because once we do applique, we can just peel off the back. Right. Maybe we can. Oh, here, I'll give you a good tip. You can take a pin. A pin? And score it. And then it will open. Oh, that's genius pin. I know. Especially when you cut your finger with a rotary cutter. Or, I was going to say, I can come help, you know, use my long nails. If yeah, there you go. <laughs> need be. So I'm going to come right here at one and a half inches so that my teapots are all the same from the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to line it up here. And I just kind of eyeballed this part. Sure. Well, and it's nice because that, that bottom of it is nice and straight so you can line it up with yep. your ruler easy and yeah. Yep. So one and a half inches. Then I'm just going to press, take my iron and press it. You don't want to iron it. It will curdle or curl, not curdle. That's what milk does. <laughs> it's been a long time, Emily. <laughs> All right. No. All right. There we go. And then you're going to take your lid and put it on top. Mm -hmm. Now, Emily, I've had a birthday since I've seen you last. Yes. Now, isn't that so fun? That is so fun. It was the Me Sunday too. before 4th of July weekend and... There was much celebration. It was great. I know, right? Okay, so like, now I'm going to put my little lid on top and give it a gentle press. Do you ever feel like the fireworks are like for you? So when I was a kid, my dad would say that to me. He's oh. like, listen, it just takes the rest of the country a couple of days to celebrate your birthday. But don't worry. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> it will happen. Listen, I was the youngest and only girl. That I was quite spoiled in my life. Aww. Okay. All right, so now, one and a half inches, let's do a blue one. Um, though currently Brock is the favorite child of our family. My oh. dad thinks he is hilarious. He likes it when Brock's on the show with me. I mean, he's... He's, he's not wrong. Good. I mean, he's he he, he come he's come for my job, but you know I'm not I'm not going <laughs> down without a fight, Brock. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, here we go. So now look at this pretty pretty blue one. Okay, here we go. All right, Emily, while I iron this down, have people been to high tea? Do they have questions? Yes, uh, Lynn actually went to high tea when she was in Bermuda. What? Right? How does that happen? I don't know, but it seems like a, like a very interesting place to have a high tea and like, but also like very delicious. What I does one have... wear to high tea in Bermuda? Right? Okay. Floral, I don't know. Floral everything. I know. Um, that sounds so fun. And from New Jersey has in London and Scotland. Oh, you know, wow. My folks and I are noodling going to uh, England, Scotland, and Ireland in 2024. There you go. And I think we're going to have to put high tea on the You're going to have to for sure. I think that'd be so much fun. All right. All right. So now I have pre-fused my fabric. And my teapots are ready. So now we're ready to make the sashing. But the question always comes... How can AccuQuilt, how can the AccuQuilt system improve my quilting experience? Well, I'm gonna tell you, first of all, quilters, with applique dies, it's gonna be perfect every time. Normally, if you have an applique, you would have to have a pattern or a template or whatever, and then cut it out, and it's never gonna be the same after the first one. Uh, we have a special visitor. Do you wanna come say hi? The lovely Erica is here. She is not looking lovely, so she's not going to be on camera. She's here. She is getting ready. She and I are getting ready for our next AccuQuilt Along, which starts here in August, right? August 2nd. August 2nd. So she's here to get my fabric and have her fabric, and it's going to be great. Oh, boy. I know. I'm excited. Have you all announced the project yet? No, it's a secret. <gasps> okay. Next Wednesday, Ooh. Erica's going to come and announce what we're going to tell the pattern and the dyes that you're going to need. Actually, we're going to tell you it's a cube. It's a cube that you need. Oh, boy. So cubes are in sale right now. Today be a good day to pick one up. Five inch, Erica? Six inch. Five inch. Okay. Oh, boy. All right, so now let me show you how to make the flying geese session. So I'm going to come back here, and you can see... So this is the sashing between the blocks, and this is a flying geese block right there, okay? And four of them, look at that cool star block that it makes. So cute. I know, I think it's so fun. All right, so we uh, took pieces from our four inch cube, our shape. So let me just show you what it looks like, okay? This is our four inch cube. We have seven different sizes of cubes. We have tons of videos on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, our website. Be sure and check them all out, okay? And we need two and a half inch strips, but I'm gonna show you a trick about it, okay? And this event, like all of our live events, are recorded and live on all of those same platforms. So let's cut some uh, quarter, inch uh, quarter inch triangles and half square triangles. So in every cube, shape four is a quarter inch triangle or quarter square triangle. And every shape five are half square triangles. Weeny, weeny little half square triangles. These two shapes together make flying geese. Okay? And don't forget, this is a free pattern at AccuQuilt.com. So I would download the pattern and follow it. So the quarter square triangles are going to be white. So I measured from here to here, added a quarter of an inch, and just rough cut with the fabric strips. 
Remember that lengthwise grain needs to be parallel to these lengthwise blades. Blades. It doesn't matter with applique because you've already pre-fused the fabric, right? And so you don't have to worry about lengthwise grain. But when we're cutting shapes, and Emily, how many layers can we cut of cotton? Up to six. Up to six. Okay. All right. So I am going to put a mat on here, and I'm going to tuck it in here because I'm gonna show you this cool trick. If you have a go big, this is what you can do. Okay. Are we gonna have a race? Uh, well, we're gonna, yes, we are. Hopefully. Measure from here to here. And all of my half square triangles is the same blue that were the top of our Mad Hatters. All right. Pretty. So we're gonna go back and forth, six layers. Okay. I wanna just make sure the folds come past the blades. Okay. You know, and this is what's so cool too is, you know, obviously like we see the pattern and it's got that fun that, you know, the navy and pink, which I think is far, is, is not so used cute. nearly enough. Um, but it's it's so fun to see, you know, yours and, and Oakley's interpretation of this pattern right, by, you know, seeing all the different colorways you can go with. Yes. Yeah, and be sure and share your projects with us on our Facebook page and um, use that hash, uh, hashtag AQSOS. Okay, so I have two dies. I have two mats. I can run both of them together. It's mad that I pushed it, sorry. It's mad because I pushed it in. Okay, you ready? I know, that's what's nice about the Go Big though is it does have that hands-free zone to prevent you Okay, it's just from... mad, so I'm just <laughs> gonna cut it. <laughs> it's being rebellious today. It is. Oh, there we you go. silly Go Big. There she goes. Sometimes if the fabric, like here on the edge that's coming, if it gets too much here in the sensor, it stops. Yeah. It's okay. Well, that's nice too, because it, you'd hate to have it go like halfway through and then, you know, stop cutting and right. all that right. business. So yeah, kind for of sure. a nice feel safe there. Okay, all right. So look at all these quarter square triangles. Two, four, six, eight times six is... 48. 48, thank you. Yep, and four times six is 24. Mm. So I have enough um, shapes to make flying geese. All right, so let's um, start sewing our flying geese together. All right, okay. Emily, do we have questions or have people been to high tea? Yes, we absolutely do. Let me check questions as well, because okay. I know that, um, let's see here okay um when you fan fold do you add extra fabric asks arlene no i just measure a quarter of an inch on either side rough cut with the fabric and i just barely come to the edge of those blades so look when i did this see tiny tiny little edges tiny tiny little fold yeah yeah that's a good question though. It's nice to see too how like, how, you know, folks ask all the time, is this gonna be, you know, economical for my fabric? Am I gonna waste fabric? And you can just see by using it that you're absolutely not gonna waste fabric. Right. You're gonna really, you know, in fact, maximize the potential of those fabrics. You know, I was at the um, Long Beach show, um, was that just the other day? Like last <laughs> week, like Monday? I, I feel like we just got back on Monday. <laughs> I did, I got back on Monday. I got to see Mason and Emmy. Um, yeah, I mean, people came up to me and said, you know, I'm wasting fabric. And I'm like, ooh, show me how you lay fabric on a die. Exactly, exactly. Right, we just lay it over the shape. Okay, so now I'm gonna build my um, flying geese. So I'm gonna start here. I'll move this so you can have a camera. I'm gonna start here with my quarter square triangle in the center. And these are half square triangles here on the side. Mm -hmm. And look, quilters, we've cut off the dog ears. So that. from here to here is a quarter inch seam. So I'm just gonna chain piece some together and then I'll show you how we're gonna do this. Cause this is super cool. All right, um, do we have more questions, Emily? Yeah, we actually have a question from Pam. Hi, Pam. Um, if you have the eight inch cube and can only get one more right now, which would you suggest? Which cube? Yeah, which other cube to go with the eight inch? 
much. What would you say, Emily? I would say either, well, depending on if you're kind of, if you like larger or smaller blocks, if you're looking for something smaller, four inch cube all the way. All the way. If you're wanting to go big, I would say the 12 inch yes. cube. Because that um, works really, really well with the eight inch as well. Yes. They just pair so nicely. When you expand to that nine patch, um, they work together just beautifully. That would be my answer as well. Um, and if you're looking to add a companion set, um, those eight inch companions, corners and angles, that's a good choice as well. Yeah. Because I think on our website for our little AccuQuilt days, we're having some good sales. Yeah, I actually, I had a, a gal call in yesterday um, on the customer experience line and she ended up going with the five inch uh, cube angles and corners because of that great sale we're having right yeah. now. Yeah, so. fabulous. Okay, so I'm just chain piecing for days. Okay. Ah, uh, chain piecing, it's the Chain best. piecing for days, it's what I love to do. Ooh, this is interesting. So Dawn wonders, I know the lengthwise grain has to go into the cutter in the correct direction, mm -hmm. but is there a specific direction that the die needs to be loaded into nope. the machine? So people ask me that all the time. Here, I'll show you. Hold on, hold please, as we say here. <laughs> uh, oh, here's the teapot. I I cannot lose all my parts and pieces. So typically, you know, we put the teapot die through this way. For sure you could put it through this way if you wanted to. And you could, and if and with the applique dies, it doesn't matter because there's, I mean, there's no lengthwise grain. Exactly, exactly. But yep, you can. And it's then, most important, lengthwise grain through the cutter. Exactly. And just to clarify, so you know how we were running the, the two six by six dies with, you know, the little kind of tails on them. Yes. Could we have run those through the cutter with the tails going out the, the back of the die? Ask, think about that and then tell me the answer. Well, no, because the lengthwise grain wouldn't be uh -huh, there, in the see? appropriate direction. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So now I'm taking, that's exact, Emily's exactly right. Because I thought about that and I was like, oh no, then the green is wrong. Right. So now we're going to press these little half square triangles away from the center. Here we go. Ooh, and when we get a sec to, um, Dolly is very excited about the quilt behind me and was wondering if oh, we here. close Oh, here. Okay. Up. So now that I've pressed them away, um, I'm going to add this half square triangle to the other side. Perfect. And look, they're gonna be perfect. Okay, and so now talk about the quilt behind you because it's super cute. It really is. Is it by Laura Strickland? Um, it is, yes, Lauren, Laura Strickland of Orange Blossom Quilt. I met Laura um, a couple of years ago at um, Quilt Festival. She is delightful. She's such a dear. Yeah, she's fabulous. Um, and this quilt behind me is called the Go Grandma's China Hutch Throw Quilt Pattern. Um, as you can see, it uses not only the teapot, but she has, um, she used the circle die to kind of create some little plates and platters. Um, and then she used, I believe that's the tea medley. The tea, oh, the oh, no, that's the tea. Is this the tea bag with yes. a little triangle at the very top that she kind with of the tea bag? Had, yes, that she kind of ad libbed there, which I think is so fun. Um, what else did she use here? But yeah, she she just made it look like this adorable little. She used China strips, hut. and then the block behind it um, oh. was made with a cube. But, yep. So gorgeous. Actually, it's the same um, pattern as we're creating right now. The same block. The oh yeah, there we go. Oh, Laura, look at how smart she is. Uh, we love you. You're just the best. Oh, see, I love it. Yeah, that's a really fun pattern. Mm -hmm. And a great way to like use up your scraps because you can make fabric that matches, right? You know, plates that match your tea cups. And she used the tea cup or the Tea cup medley, what is that called? Coffee and tea medley. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew it had medley in it. Yeah, those two are great dyes to work, you know, but with the tea party and the coffee and tea medley, like you're, you're set. That's, you're set. It's the perfect quilt. Okay, here we go. So now I just have flangies, flangies in every cube, shapes four and five. Okay. One needs yes. a thing. So now that I've pressed to one side, I'm gonna come here to the back. I find it just easier on this little four inch cube to press from the back. Oh yeah. And then I have 
flying geese. Every cube has flying geese shapes four and five. They're just different sizes. Just they equal the size of the rectangle in the cube. I just love how teeny tiny they are. You know, Erica courage. loves this cube. It is her all-time favorite. It's adorable. Oh, this is this would be kind of this is a fun question. So okay. Joy wonders if I wanted to make a coaster of just the teapot, how would you finish the edge? Oh, somebody asked that. Um, okay, so let's talk about it before we cut uh, sashing. Okay, so if I were just making coasters, I would take a layer of cotton, of the, the, the teapot cotton, or a backing, I guess, a layer of batting, and then a layer of teapot fabric, mm -hmm. and I would run it through the cutter. Ah. Right? Then I would take the backing, the, the batting, and the lid, and run it through the cutter, and then I'd kind of tuck it all together and just stitch around it, or you could quilt it. And then That'd we have cool. wrap and zap, right? So we sure do. that's what I would use. I would use wrap and zap and then go around it. I love that. And then it would look like a teapot and you could have a coaster. I have thought much about that, so by the way. Fabulous. Could you tell? <laughs> okay. All right, so now that we have some flying geese, let's make some sashing. So the sashing strips are two and a half inch strips by six and a half inch strips. Guess what? We have a little trick. Let me show it to you. All right, I love this. Quilters ask me all the time, if you're cutting rectangles, how do you cut rectangles? Well, I'm gonna show you, okay? Boy, oh boy. So we need six and a half by two and a half. So what we're gonna do is, we need our iron, so I'm gonna leave that right there. Ooh, but we don't need cubes. Hold on. Speaking of cubes, it's um, Sonia's wondering if um, there's a pattern that you, you know she has all the cubes. What okay. do you suggest making? We have. I know we have a pattern. I just I'm trying to remember the name of it where it uses like it's like in Six, purple eight, and nine blue. And Twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know it's on our website. I'm looking yeah. for it right now. Okay. Let Emily look for it. But yes, we do have a pattern. All right. Really fun. So this is our six and a half inch strip die. It's gonna cut a six and a half inch strip. I measure from here to here, make a sub cut a seven inch with the fabric strip. Right. So perfect. Okay. And here's, that's my pattern, so I know what the heck I'm doing here. Okay. All right, so what I wanna do so that I don't get big mountains in the middle Oh, right. I want to make sure that the fold of my fabric is parallel to this black line right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this goes, pa there are no blades down here, no blades down here. This goes past my blades. So I'm just going to fold it right here to this line. Yeah. Because we know that 90 degrees is straight. All right. Then I'm going to move my drink. And I'm gonna get a big mat. Eureka, found it. What is it called? Okay, it is called the Go Cube Epic Mix, mix and, and Match mat. Sampler Quilt Pattern. There you go. It uses the six, eight, nine, and 12 inch cubes. And the cool thing about it is it's three dimensional. Some yeah. of those have like prayer points on them. It's really cool. Okay. Yeah, definitely check it out. All right, so I'm gonna cut six and a half inch strips. Remember, we have 18 sizes of strip dies. All of them will fit through the Go and the Go Big, and we have two sizes that will fit through the Go Me cutter. Correct. Okay. Yep, we have that two and a half inch, two inch finish for both the, the Go Me and the Go, so it's like you're you're set. You're set, that's what you need. <laughs> okay. All right, so now, look at this. This is my big ta-da here. So I don't have any mountains in the middle because we have that parallel, right? right? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now I want to cut two and a half inch by six and a half inch strips. So now what I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna get my two and a half inch strip die. This way, every time your rectangles are perfect, quilters. Okay. And right here's 90 degrees. I'm gonna run it right here next to 90 degrees. Oh, are we using strip dye magic? This makes we it are. Happy. We're making rectangles. Okay. And okay. So back and forth, back and forth. And the pattern calls for two and a half inch squares. So I have a two and a half inch strip that I cut with my uh, strip die. And now I'm gonna lay it right here at 90 degrees. And I'm gonna cut some squares for our project. Perfect. Okay, just make sure that fold comes past the edge. That's right, are these the center squares for yep, all of our little? Yeah, the center squares for the sashing. Uh huh, perfect. Because why would you ever want to cut two and a half inch squares with a rotary cutter uh, and a ruler? For the life there's of a die. There's a die for all of that. <laughs> okay, all right, and then I'm gonna put my big mat on top. Look at this. <gasps> oh my. I love it when we make rectangles. It's one of my very favorite things to make. I okay, bet. tell us. I just had the real, uh, such a cool comment from Ann. So she says that she was served high tea at the Queen's family castle by the castle servants on a tour. Such lovely china and the biscuits were excellent. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine that? No. I, no. that just sounds amazing. And biscuits in real life are cookies. Yeah. I, <laughs> the British would say to me all the time when I went to London for my shows, they would say, would you like some biscuits? And I'm like, no. And then I realized they were cookies. Right, I'd be like, Where, but without gravy? What do you mean? Right, there was so much, <laughs> there were so many questions about that. Oh, so great. biscuits, I know, biscuits and gravy. Biscuits are high tea. Okay, now look. Now I've cut perfect two and a half by six and a half inch rectangles. Perfect. I know, it's what we need for the sashing and two and a half inch squares for days. Gorgeous. Okay, so quilters, this is why you should have multiple strip dies so that you can cut rectangles every time. The trick is to cut the widest section first. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna follow my pattern because <laughs> when I was sewing some blocks together earlier, um, I sewed them together incorrectly. Okay. So I know you find that so hard to believe. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take my strips. I'm gonna follow the pattern, okay? Oh. Because what we're gonna create is this star shape. Here, I'm gonna make one for you. I'm gonna turn the page so I can see what it looks like. Okay. Oh, there's a square in there. I, think, I was yeah. like, wait a minute, hold please. Okay. Ah, right, and then this goes here and this goes here. Oh, so what cool. you're gonna do is we're gonna make a sashing to go on the side of our teapot squares. Right. And then that side will come here and then you're gonna make long sashing between. Oh. So we'll, we'll sew some so you can see. Yeah, let's okay. do it. All right, so what you wanna do is typically, typically the you sew flying geese right here on the top. So I would tell you to um, turn it over so you can see where the seam is. Right. But these we're actually gonna sew away from the center. Okay, right. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do um, just another piece of sashing. Okay, so we can do a little chain piecing. Cool. All right, quilters, don't forget, do you have questions? Emily is here to answer them to help us. Yes. Oh, um, Victoria is actually wondering, we were talking about the Wrap and Zap, and yes. uh, we have Mary asking about Inselbright. Could we kind of talk about um, Wrap and Zap and Inselbright and which one oh, is yes. there for like a coaster? Or so thing? that's a really great question because Inselbright is what we use for the uh, oven mitts. Okay. Oh, Erica prank you back. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's good. Um, 
Insel Bright is what we use for oven mitts. So I would, now that you've said that, we should use Insel Bright. Whereas Wrap and Zap is for... Like microwavable, like bowl Microwaves, cozies. yeah, for right. bowl cozies. Yeah. Okay, so hold please, this is live TV. I feel like this happens to me almost every week, even though I did give a new bobbin. Well, it's funny. We, we did <laughs> sew for quite some time here. Right, well, we, we when uh, when Erica hosted the show, this this exact same thing happened the first time she went to go sew, so we said that it, that you, pr you were uh, pranking. Oh, I pranked her, yeah. <laughs> that could happen. Oh, goodness. That could happen. Well, yeah, so I would use Insulbrite. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, let's see. Can you use, oh, Connie's wondering, can you use sew line fabric, fabric glue to hold the teapot shape to applique it to a bowl cozy? Yeah. But. But you couldn't microwave couldn't put it. Put it in right? the microwave. Okay. Yeah. At our house, the bowl cozies go in the microwave. Because then they hold soup and hot cereal and stuff. Because right. otherwise, then when you go to take it out, then you got to grab something. Look Back at that. Up. Oh, wow. There we go. Um, so, up. yeah, our bowl cozies are. And um, I made a whole bunch for Taylor and his people. Mm-hmm. And I have noticed as of late that sometimes bowl cozies are missing after Taylor has been there. So I asked him the other day, I said, hey, are you taking bowl cozies home? And he goes, yeah, ours are getting a little ratty. <laughs> and I said, well, okay, you could just tell me that. And he's like, no, these are already done. I'll just take yours. <laughs> so I think. I, these are done. Yeah, ours are getting a little ratty because the children are using them. Oh, that's great. I know. Okay. <laughs> I tell you, every day at our house is pretty exciting. Okay, so now I'm going to add the little flying geese to the bottom of this one. Notice I'm just doing some chain piecing here. Exactly. So I think for Christmas, um, I'm going to make a whole bunch of bowl cozies for the people. Love that. Right, maybe everybody gets their own. <laughs> right, because Ray has his own and he gets mad if anybody uses his. So. Oh, goodness. I know. Well, his has Star Wars fabric on it. And okay. See, Mandalorian now, fabric, actually. Now I understand. Okay. <laughs> I love that. It's only good for hot cereal. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But that's a great question. So make some, make some coasters. I think that would be really pretty. Yeah, that'd be really, really cute. Really, really cute. And then post them on our Facebook page because we... Love to see what everybody's doing. Right. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now watch. So now I've created these sashing pieces. Okay. So when I press them, I'm gonna press them towards the center. Okay. So there's not all that bulk. Right. Okay. Those little flying geese. Oh, I know, all of that. These have been some really great questions today. Right? Oh, actually, we have another one from Noreen. That's hi, Noreen. Pretty, that's pretty darn good. I'm trying to do a sew along with half square triangles. Okay. The 8-inch cube has all the dies I need. Okay. I already have the 12-inch cube. Should I just buy the separate half square dies, or would the cube be more versatile? Well, it depends on what half square triangle sizes she needs. Because, yes, you could just buy half square. If you're doing a sew along and they have, like, three inch finished half score triangles. We have three inch finished half score triangle dies. Yeah. yeah. That's a great question. It is, yeah. But yeah. you know, the, like we said earlier, the eight and the 12 inch cube work really nicely yeah. together. So that yeah. could be kind of the next next investment in her collection. Okay. Um, we also have, someone said, oh, I need to read this comment about high tea because it was so good. Um, just want to find it here make sure I've got it correct because they were it was so good um, okay I had high tea in Jamaica we didn't have biscuits we had chicken wings I, I love okay, that I feel, I feel like <laughs> I feel like that wins it, it kind of does doesn't it like I, I think that wins wings, that just sounds like that's that's the life right there there you go <laughs> high tea in Jamaica with chicken wings all right, I've sewn my little sashing block. 
So now I'm going to sew it to my teapot. And then we'll kind of talk about the process of finishing your rows because they're super easy. We're just creating these same sashing pieces and we're just going to put them together in rows. Yeah. And okay, now quilters, we talk about this all the time. You could make more blocks, you could make less blocks, you could make placemats. Oh, that'd Wouldn't be, that be cute. Oh, I love that idea. You could make table runners. Okay, there is no dye fleece that says, this is the pattern, which is super cute. <laughs> but, you know, maybe start with a table topper or a table runner. You know, Pam, I, I have been called the dye police. <laughs> the quilting oh, police. Dear. I, so when Cora and I were working on our uh, our Morning Star quilts this yes. past weekend, um, I was you know talking to her about the importance of pressing you know between each. Oh yes, because you and I had a whole conversation about we that. We did. We really, really did. And so I said, you know, you're really going to want to press between each step because it's just going to make sure that all those corners come together yeah. crisp and. She's like, you're not the boss of me. You're not the quilt police. Cora, I can hear her saying that. You're not the boss of me. I love it so much. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay, so look. Look at that. I know. Isn't that so cute? Oh. So I would add this to create the first row. And then here's the, oh, here, hold on. Here's the sashing pieces that go between. Mm -hmm. The pattern is really easy, quilters. Okay. And look what a neat like turnout that you're going to get in this project with all of those different colors in the same fabric. Yep. So it's cohesive, yet it's yep. vibrant. Yes. And I thought Oakley did a great job picking out the highlight color of the blue for the yeah, teapots. That's gorgeous. All right, quilters, you're just going to follow the pattern to lay out your blocks. Finish the project by adding batting between the top and the backing. Pinner base quilt is desired and use your uh, favorite binding method. Now, don't forget, I'm doing uh, raw edge quilting over before I do my overall quilting. So before I sew my rows together, I'm gonna do that raw edge quilting, and right. then we'll put it together. Hey, and don't forget, AccuQuilt has a blog. Emily, tell us about our blog. It's fabulous. So we have um, exclusive patterns, tips, and tricks yep. on there. Um, if you, you know, happen to um, want more information about any of the quilt alongs, um, we always do. Erica always writes a fabulous step-by-step uh, -step tutorial, which will have not only the cutting directions with AccuQuilt, but the um, uh, rotary cutting instructions right. as well, if that's what you prefer. Um, like I said, all, all of these patterns are gonna be exclusive to that blog. So definitely sign up for alerts because these patterns are so inspirational. Yeah, you just get an alert on your phone that says the new blog has gone live. Yep, exactly. <laughs> okay, be sure to check it out. Hey, and don't forget to share your projects with us on all of our social media platforms. You wanna use, use that hashtag, hashtag AQSOS, A-Q-S-E-W-S. All right, Miss Emily, it is your time to shine. Oh boy, I can't wait. Let's announce the prize winner today of a goatee party die, shall we? I if shall. I can have a drum roll, please, gentlemen. Our winner today is Catherine C. of Litchfield Park, Arizona. Congratulations. Congratulations. Catherine, you're gonna love it. All right, quilters, don't forget to check out the AccuQuilt website for some great AccuQuilt day deals. This month's die to try is the Go Teapot die. It is only available to the end of the month or while our tiny little supply lasts. Be sure and get yours today. All right, so here in the Dream Studio, well, offsite we have Ray and Morgan and um, is Katie helping us today? Al Alyssa. Alyssa is helping us today. Yep. Thank you, Brock. In the studio, we have Brock and Kenyon and Greg and Emily and of course me. I'm Pam Heller. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more.
Join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for more launch parties and trunk shows. Next time, we'll be adding the Go Lotus block die to our permanent collection. We're so excited for you to join us. And be sure to join us for next week's AccuQuilt Live as we continue our sewing blocks for the Quilts of Valor block drive.